Right now on Weather Nation, we are taking you to a cloudy San Diego, California. Conditions are dry as of right now, but lots of changes are ahead for this weekend. Also for the first part of next week, as Hillary continues to make its push to the north, likely impacting the southwestern United States. We're talking more about Hillary and cruising, because many of us may have some vacations planned for this weekend. Let's go ahead and bring in our marine meteorologist, James Van Fleet. And James, there's likely going to see some maybe some schedule changes, according to Hillary, because we have a lot of people that may be taking those short cruises to like Catalina and Ensenada. Those will likely be impacted in the next couple of days as Hillary continues to move more to the north. I think so, Jesse, and thank you for having me on again. Great to see you again, brother. As we are heading into this weekend and Hillary is undergoing that rapid intensification, I think we're going to see a lot of ships that are down in the southern portions of Baja, California, around beautiful Cabo, even over to the east in Mazatlan and Puerto Vallarta. They will all be making a beeline to the north if they're not already tonight, definitely through tomorrow and early Saturday. As this track and I know you've been talking about this, is a little unusual to go so far north and not off to the northwest or west. And as we are expecting the seas to build with this, in the next 24 to 48 hours, I think the center and the right side of Hillary will be producing seas around 35 to 45 feet, or around 11 to 13 meters. And so as we go into the weekend, like you were talking about, the ships that might be headed down to Cabo, might be headed down to Puerto Vallarta, the short e weekend cruises even that are maybe just running to Catalina or Ensenada will likely have to tuck up on the north side of Catalina just to protect themselves from the swell. Thankfully, it looks like it is going to be a short-lived large swell event, meaning those big waves are going to settle pretty quickly as we get into Tuesday and Wednesday. But my goodness, this weekend, if you're headed out on one of those short cruises, it might end up, Jesse, being what is called a cruise to nowhere, which means you get on the ship, you head out, and you never end up in any ports until it's time to come back home. Now, if you got a nice new ship, that's no problem. you got plenty of restaurants and things to do. But if it's one of the older ships, it can be a little bit of a letdown, as if you were expecting, obviously, some great Mexican ports and food and some experiences in that respect. But Hillary definitely making her presence felt as we are headed towards a major hurricane here in the next day to two days. Yeah, James, so I, I know that will unfortunately be not so great vacation to be stuck at sea for literally three and four days. Now, can you quickly just talk about, you know, how the cruise lines, you know, try to make these decisions yeah. at the, not say the last minute, but at least like in the last yeah. day or two so they're not messing up those vacation plans? That's a great point, Jesse. And in fact, a lot of times, some people who may not be that experienced in cruising might get a little frustrated saying, why haven't we heard? Why haven't they already made a move? Well, a lot of that is because these models change so fast, the tracks change fast. And if they can get you part of that vacation that you bought, they want to deliver on that. All the lines want to do that for you and make as few adjustments as possible. So they are also waiting to see where the highest swell will be to figure out the navigation. Can we make it over here? Do we need to cancel there? So it's not an intentional hesitation. And it may feel like that, especially if you've been looking forward to this vacation for weeks or months. It is very intentional to wait as long as possible to find the best vacation as close to what you paid for as possible. And that's their reasoning as to why you may not see a move for alternate ports or flipping an itinerary until maybe 24 hours before you take off. And in some cases, it might not be until you're actually leaving the pier and underway. All right, I got one more question for you, James, before we let you go. Now, we yeah. want to talk a bit more about the Atlantic Basin. Now, obviously, the Gulf yes. of Mexico waters are very, very warm, and the tropics are slowly starting to increase out there. I'd just love to get your mm -hmm. thoughts about, as we go into the second half of the season, what are some of the things you're seeing just as, as a marine meteorologist? Oh, so the thing that has my attention, you know, we know the El Nino is and the wind shear with that are going to continue ripping those tropical waves in the southern Caribbean and the far eastern Caribbean apart, and they won't be allowed to develop. But right like you mentioned, those hot temperatures in the shallow waters off the U.S. coast have me very concerned for the next 60 to 90 days because anything that can just start a little bit of a spin has water that has no energy taken out of it. Temperatures in the mid 90s, even as we've seen from some of those buoys, you know, around 100, 101 degrees in parts of the Keys, which is shallow, of course. But that hot water with 
nothing that has taken that energy away to me says be not just mariners or folks going on cruises, but all U.S. residents. If you're on the Gulf or the East Coast, keep watching Weather Nation and paying very close attention. You don't want to go a week or two without checking a forecast because those temperatures and those waters would mean rapid intensification where we could go from just a puff of dust to a major hurricane within two to three days. Very little time to prep for that. So this is one of those years where if you are in a coastal community, I would be really be dialing in and making sure I don't go more than a couple of days without checking in on a forecast with you guys at Weather Nation or your favorite weather app, of course, and just make sure that you're ready to act quickly. All right, James, thank you so much for all your expertise about the cruise yeah. and again about everything that's happening out into the Gulf of Mexico and across the land. Let's get you over to Viper really quick to show you what is ongoing on this Thursday afternoon.